Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, currently featuring Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, Star Wars Rebels, Moonbeam City, Ruby, and Adventure Time. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Yo. Today, Delaney and I will be discussing the latest episode of Ruby, Lessons Learned. I look thinking of what ha- I'm thinking of what happened in the episode, and I don't know why it's called that. I feel like they were like lessons said. <laughs> they were learned. <laughs> Who knows if Weiss uh, actually learns these lessons? I guess. If well, I assume it, that's what they were. Just like talked at them. Yeah, I don't think those were lessons. Okay, we talk about Ruby every week that it is on uh, here on the Overly Animated podcast. Uh, you can check uh, check that out on all our coverage at overlyanimated dot com. Um, spoilers for lessons learned and all of Ruby, of course. Uh, Delaney. What did you think of this episode? Um, I mean, any episode with, with Winter is just a good episode. And Crow's great. Um, I mean, nothing really happened in the episode. I mean, the fight was kind of like, what? So here's what, okay, so there are three sections to the episode. We had the fight, we had Weiss and Winter's, uh, two parts of Weiss and Winter talking, and then we had Ruby, Yang, and Crow. So gaming was fun. I enjoyed that. Crow seems pretty chill. And do, do you like Crow, though? I, I, was, we, I was pretty positive about Crow last time, and I think a lot of people were like, eh, I don't know about that. I really like him. He seems cool. And he apparently isn't actually their uncle. Did, was that established here? Yes, because he said, that's when I met your parents, which I guess oh, that means well, he could, <laughs> yeah. they're not actually related. I guess not. Which is fine. It was just that something really odd to be revealed this late, I guess. I mean, they could have been re- related and just not have met met. I mean, that seems unlikely. That's, that's a little weird, but I mean, it's fine. This is a minor point, anyway. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the episode. I mean, it wasn't like a big, like, not a lot happened. So, but I mean, okay, I should say like things happened, but it wasn't a very actiony episode. I enjoyed it though. I really liked it. I thought this was a good episode, and it, there will be obviously, and we have a lot. We have a lot to discuss. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think not, not as much as last last time, but. uh like, I think this last episode was super much more plotty, much uh, a lot, like, ambiguous that could be theorized on. And this one is just, like, interesting character interactions. Yes. Yeah. I, I, hints, I, and hints, I think. And there's a lot of foreshadowing in this episode. Interesting. We will we will go over everything that is said and see what might be foreshadowing. Um, yeah, I liked Lessons Learned. It's kind of a quiet episode. There's not that much going on. There's not a lot to love, but there is no, also nothing to hate, which for the season I think means that this episode is a win. Uh, that's a little <laughs> negative, but it's, I, the fights, we'll talk about the fights. So, I don't, I'm super anti fight, uh, uh, tournament fight every episode, and that's starting to really be annoying, but the Weiss and Winter interactions were very good. Uh, interesting um and the crow yang and ruby interactions are also fine um I, I think i liked last time's better episode three because there's just more there you know like yeah uh, but um and we actually had like stuff happening there's stuff happening and there's like like i don't know what i'm supposed to love about this right like i like winter and i like weiss and winter's interactions but a lot of it was just um kind of monologuing on plot you know which the show never does incredibly well so um it was it was it was good uh, i i don't like i still think there's a lot there's a lot of people who are super worried about this season people are like oh it's gonna suck it already sucks um and i don't think this episode does anything to dissuade those fears however it's not a super negative it's not like uh it's not an it's episode not two episode. you know it's not the worst so that's fine I also think it's actively good. I shouldn't say that. But. Yeah, no, it's good. And I think there's, I mean, the fact that there's less fighting in it bodes well for it, at least given that the fights we've been seeing are tournament fights, and the fact that we had less tournament fighting this episode is a win. Yeah, I, I think so. Although, I, I, it almost worries me more because this fight is just has nothing to do with the, the rest of the episode. At least the previous fights were like, oh, the main characters are going to watch, and then they're going to do other stuff. This yeah. one's just there. I mean, I guess they're watching, but who cares? Well, it's... Well, I think there is foreshadowing in this fight, I believe. Okay, let's talk the fight. What, um, if, at, if at all significance, did you get from, so this is Coco and Yatsuhashi versus Emerald and Mercury. What, if any significance, did you take away from the fight towards the overall plot? Well, the fact that they won, like, again, we we know this is, it's not rigged, but, well, it's rigged in the way that they're deciding the fight, and I believe they're also picking what what where they will be fighting. 
Interesting. Like the, yeah, I, th- I think I think so. And but also the really weird part at the end of the fight where it was like she saw him and it, but he had gotten knocked out. So I don't know if one of them can change forms or like what's going on. I think you're. Yeah, I think that that was not done very well. But I think you're like over over analyzing not over analyzing but like you're trying you're taking away more than what was intended i think like i think this was just supposed to be um like she looks away for a second and then um there he's fat like whichever one of them was fast enough to take him out in that in that part like i'm pretty sure that's what all they were going for oh i have no idea because that was like really weird it, it was it, it didn't make sense like they're trying to just show it from but he wasn't the thing was he wasn't there anyway like it wouldn't have made sense for him to walk up there anyway it didn't make any sense like i think he was there at least this is how i read it like yatsuhashi was there to calling out to coco and then uh she looked she like heard it and then looked back and then he was gone already i don't even know it's it, 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 the pacing on that was very bad I, in my, in my... like i don't know what happened i think i took it as something they have some sort of weird ability we still don't know their semblances so though i think i though i think mercury i think what they're suggesting with him is that he um he has some sort of not wi- kind of like a wind power like like he can do weird stuff with like his legs like he, he has very odd movements uh yeah so we learn a lot more about um mercury and emerald's fighting styles emerald especially so uh i'm i don't know how to describe it exactly like however i describe this people could say it's wrong because i think it's like subjective (laughs) i mean it's something happened on screen but it's not clear what it is to me it looks like they were bombs um bombs they're kind of like air bombs oh okay like light slash air bombs like they think something exploded every time he did something yeah so that was kind of my read on it and they came out of his feet so I don't know. He's like he is I like bomb bending. Is uh, it like yeah? Is it like energy or? I'm not sure if it's something from his uh, boots, which did seem special because they also blocked uh, yeah. Yatsuhashi's sword. So it could have been coming from his boots, or it's something that he just summons. You know? Yeah. Um, I think but... it's some, it's some part of his semblance. I am, yeah. It's I think it's probably his boots combined with his semblance. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is like a light bomb, like uh, okay, um, and maybe the air manipulation is separate. Like, I don't know if that was, I didn't read that as inherently the sit part of this, uh, of these light bomb things. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, I don't think, well, I, in that case, I don't necessarily think the light bomb is like his semblance, but like what he, the wind stuff he does is his semblance. That's possible. Yeah. Like the, the, well, the light bombs might be coming from his boots. By the way, I apologize if later it turns out like miles says that miles or carrie say that these were not something that is not light bombs but that's just my read on it from the, the it, it's very fight. i mean the entire fight made very little sense um so why do you say it made very little sense well it just one like the, I mean, the entire conversation we just had about like that whatever. was yeah that was just poorly yeah poorly done but and then like i don't know it just it was odd like just the entire fight was odd which makes sense. I mean, I think that was, that was the point. It was supposed to be odd and weird because, like, Mercury and them are like weird and like do weird stuff. But I don't know. It was just a. It was just weird. It was. It was, it very was pur- difficult to follow. It was purposefully um, ominous um, from the from the perspective of Coco and Yatsuhashi. I yeah. think the I think the narrative of the fight was extremely clear, and it was also like, like it was such so clear to a boring extent. Um, so I think it's a little, I, I, a little, the, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think that means that the narrative wasn't clear. Like, like I think very clearly Mercury and Emerald, like go into hiding and this yeah. is all about the perspective of Coco and Yatsuashi and them like ambush attacking them, like drawing them out from each other and ambush attacking them. And then they're nervous. Like, I think that's all very clear, but like what I think you're taking issue with like what Mercury and Emerald are doing off screen and like, we never even know, you know? Yeah um that's that's the thing and then i think i mean that's on purpose because we're not really supposed to know what they're able to do it's supposed to be yeah they've always it's always supposed to be like ominous with the villains and especially here with your from what perspective they're going from from this we only really see mercury fighting we don't actually like we see emerald fighting and like what she does but we still don't know what emerald semblance is or like what she's actually capable yeah we see emerald do a few things here it's it's less than mercury i agree she has this chain that she fires off from the from the forest to chain Coco and drag her in. And then she also has these, um, I describe them in the, the show notes as like gun claws, uh, that yeah. she fights with. Um, I don't know if they were going for anything beyond that. Like, I feel like, um, I, I, I would not draw any conclusions that she has. I don't know what the chain is, but like, it seems almost clear cut that she just has these gun claw weapons and, um, yeah. and 
and Mercury has more interesting things going on, I think. Yes. Well, I mean, we just we only we really only see Mercury fight. Like, yes. Yeah, we see her for like a second with the. We we do see a clear shot of her with her weapons, but it is not for very long. Yeah, she's not. She just doesn't seem as much of an active participant in the fight as Mercury. She was. She was almost. She like represented the ominous off-screen presence for much of it. Yeah, I, I. if, if it wasn't clear before, I, I don't necessarily like had the storytelling of the fight. Um, I think it was too, there's not enough to it and what it well, was. I think, there was, I think it was kind of pointless for it to go on as long as it did because we knew the Emerald and Mercury had to win. Like that's the whole point. That's another, it, yeah, that's another thing. That's definitely good. Definitely a good point. At the end of last episode, I mean, even before that, it's just very obvious that, uh, Emerald and Mercury are, Emerald and Mercury and all the villain fights, they're always just going to win because they're rigging it in their favor. So yeah. there's no stakes here. Like we know what's going to happen. And it's just, and it's like, I don't understand what the point is of why, if, especially if we're going to watch them fight and we have no idea what their abilities are. So like, why are we watching them fight, especially yeah. if you're going to make it uh, ambiguous and not have, like, and not clear about the participants? Um, this was a really strange storytelling decision to show this fight, first of all, and then to show it like To me, they, they to me that's why it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't understand, like, why we had to watch it. Yeah, um... I don't, I don't really either. I think that, uh, you can conclude more things about Mercury and Emerald's abilities from this fight, and I certainly did. Um, yeah. however, I still don't care. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it's like, whatever. Like, we, I guess we learned about Yatsuashi, except not really. He's a giant sword, that's it. Um, Coco, we already knew what she does, and she's awesome. Uh, very, I was pretty disturbed by her taking out a giant machine gun and firing it off into fellow students during a friendly fight. Like, to me, like, I know that they're all just attacking each other and it doesn't make any sense anyway, right? But, yeah. like, she's just firing a giant machine gun at, at fellow, like, students. Like, well, what I mean, the heck? Well, I mean, that's the entire, I mean, that's that's what this entire tournament, like... This doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I to well, a certain honestly, extent, swords you can use non-lethally, but you can't just shoot a gun non-lethally. Well, honestly, though, like, the entire show is built about around this, like, concept of, yeah. like, a yeah. warrior school... And they're never going easy. They're never using training swords or any. They're always. They're the thing is the way we view the fights. It always seems like a, a, a like a fight to the death. Now, obviously, people obviously when the students fight, no one dies. But like all of the fights we've seen, they've been fights to the death, and it's like they're depending upon other students' skills. Honestly, I don't understand how Jean's not dead. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean he is. He's, how is he not dead? He's good people surrounding him. You know. Uh, but, but I mean, I mean, like in the beginning, though, like. Like from back in season one, like this this like it's this is like a weird thing that we just kind of have to get over, and like how they're doing this because that's the entire show is that when they fight each other, like obviously it's dependent upon the other person's skill and no one dies, but like they they never cut back. It's always like to the death. Um, I mean, I think these tournament fights are clearly supposed to not be lethal, but yeah. they don't change their fighting styles. So that's what I mean, that the yeah. fighting, the way they fight is always in that way, as if they're fighting grim. It's always like that. It's the same thing. Yeah. And to me, I think when you bring guns into it, it doesn't make like logical sense anymore. I know that's kind of a weird, like nitpick. That's kind of how I view like swords. I'm used to not being like lethal, like practice sword fights and stuff. Guns, it just to me doesn't make any sense. Um, so that was a little bit weird thing during the fight with Coco for me, even though, you know, she's still incredible and awesome. Um, I think, like, by talking about the fight in this way, we went over kind of everything that happens. Uh, you know, obviously, Mercury and Emerald win. Coco and Yatsashi are both KO'd. We had Velvet's reactions twice during the fight, which was, I guess, neat. Um, Velvet's kind of a nothing character, but, she, like, everyone loves her, and her design's good and stuff like that, so... You know, whatever. She's a bunny person. Like. She's a cute bunny. So there you go. And Cinder, happy watching the fight. So I think overall that um, what do you what do you think? Do you think this was like better or worse than some of the fights we've gotten this season? Uh, I mean, even though we've been complaining about it, I almost want to call it like one of the better ones. You know. Uh, I mean, the only thing interesting about it is Mercury. Yeah. Uh, like the re- honestly, like as a fight, it's not. The thing is, it's hard for it to be interesting because we knew who was going to win. So I'll, yeah, I I completely agree with that. I, I'll for sure take this over the um, the boys versus girls fight from episode Agreed. two. Um, I think it's probably on par with the team Juniper fight. Uh, it's similar to the team Ruby fight. Um, I'll probably take the Winter versus uh, versus Crow fight over this one. Yes. Yeah. So. Right. 
You know, it's just none of these have been that great. Um, the, the big worry with the season is they're just going to keep having fight scenes every episode. And that is the biggest weakness of the show um, right now is the fight scenes are I mean, not incredible. If we get the next fight scene and if it's Ruby, that'll be like intensely better than. It's like making the fight interesting to the audience all is on its own going to make it better i agree right like uh, like they do need to speed up the fights and figure th- figure out how to work these with the new like, if we had an entire but... episode that was a really intense fight between ruby and these characters that'd be fine yeah i mean i still I, I still didn't think it was that interesting when Ru- team ruby in the first episode had a tournament fight i feel like it would need to have actual stakes like versus like villains you know yeah maybe well, if maybe know. if it was like uh yang and weiss versus mercury and emerald maybe that would could be pretty interesting you know yeah. In the tournament, which is probably where we're going, I think. Yes. Um, even though we haven't seen Yang and Weiss uh, actually fight doubles yet. That's the thing. That's what worries me. Like, we've have. Actually... Where's Blake? Blake was, yeah, Blake has not been in the last two episodes. Um, like, where is she? Where is my child? Where is she? They're, it's, it, they're making conscious decisions about which of the, of the, the four to include in, in their scenes. Um, but yeah, that's what worries me about this is we've had a lot of tournament scenes but we still haven't progressed anywhere close to the end of the tournament we still have a ton of doubles to go yeah we still have like all of the four person the singles like yeah well if if it's not ruby next episode i hope just hope that it's just either highlights or it's i would be all for a montage scene yeah catching us up or or if they're just showing us the bracket and like who's been eliminated that would be great too yeah we need to skip ahead for sure yeah i'm so like I don't care. I, and I think that's probably where we're going with this because last, like last episode, we we had a hint. Uh, we knew that this fight was coming going into this episode. We don't have any hints of what fight is to come after yeah. this one, so we we could be due for a skip ahead. Yeah, um, but I, I think we should skip ahead to the doubles finals of, uh, like I said, Yang and Weiss versus. Or it Mark. doesn't even have. To, or it doesn't even have to be finals. It can be the semifinals, and well, that would still be like four episodes of fighting to go you know there's also the different categories like i don't know i'm just well i mean like oh i think i think we need an episode that's like them prepping that would be good yeah i mean any even if it's even if it's like uh like uh exposition scenes surrounding the fights it's not that it's about that tournament which is bad it's just that it's so much is devoted to the tournament fight scenes like yeah like we can have like character interaction scenes of them prepping and stuff that's fine too Anyway, so that's the negative with the episode, and I think the rest is much better. Yes. So let's get into that. Um, so let's talk, uh, what do you know? Let's do the Yang, Ruby, and Crow scene first, I guess, and then we'll talk about the Weiss and Winner as, as one part, because we do Weiss and Winner once, then cut to Yang, Ruby, Crow, then go back to Weiss and Winner. I like when episodes are simply divided. <laughs> um, there's four scenes in this, two of them are part of one scene. Um, too much cutting in between things sometimes doesn't work. Okay. Yes. Um, Yang, Ruby, and Crow. This scene is surrounded. Uh, the context is uh, Crow playing games with uh, his, you know, not actual uh, nie- uh, nie- nieces. Yeah. Um, although I guess I don't know. I guess that's always been implied that it's not. He's not their actual uncle. You know. Well, I don't know if that was always implied. I mean, it just there was no reason when they said Uncle Crow to not assume that he was actually their uncle. Now this is. I mean, I'm not like this is a common thing. I even have people who I consider family who yeah. aren't family, yeah. and that's fine. It's just like it's really weird when like we've gotten this far, and it's like well, once well, once drunk. we learn that Crow is on their team, was on their uh, dad and mom's team, yeah. then it can be assumed. But at the same time, it's like Yang and uh, Ruby ended up on the same team, and they're actually half sisters, you know. So yeah. it could have just been the other way too. Okay, anyway, um, we had yeah. What do you think of? Uh, crow's reactions of crow beating them and ruby and yang's reactions to that yang gets upset well, i think it's really funny because they're just like well like, like it's really funny to the lead in like at first you think they're gonna duel and it's like no they're just playing this game yeah and then he beats her in like half a second and then uh a yang just like just hilariously like shoves ruby out of the way yeah it looks like they have like projection controllers like yeah this seems real. i don't know how else to describe it, it seems real really cool well they have like it's like it's like their phones like it's like the plate oh it is their phones probably yeah that's how i guess that's how they have uh all their phones anyway right it's like very thin or i don't know if it's like actually a projection or if it's just very thin no i think it's it's very thin uh plate like that's what it seems like to me and if it is or if it is it's not really like a projection so much as like a field 
if, we've seen stuff like this before on like we could discuss the difference between field and projection but let's not okay so uh, I, I i like their i do like the technology in the show that's always been pretty yeah. interesting yeah um crow's last mission um because yeah i really the animation in this part is awesome yeah okay super props for him the animation of his retelling of his uh you know, of his, of his backstory mission type good. thing. It was just really well done. Like, as someone who is a sucker for things, for example, the, like the Harry Potter three brothers, how that is done is amazing. And this is so good. Like so good. In a show kind of whose stuff. animation is often not the highlight. Um, yeah, this is so good. Yeah. This, it's, it's very good. Um, he, we went to he went to some town. I don't know. It's, it's the con- I thought the context of his mission would be important, but it's like not. No, it's a joke. <laughs> he was just gathering so info. We went to the towns, and I was defeated by the mere sight of the innkeeper's skirt length. It was so funny. Did you I like? Laughed. Actually, you actually did like that. Yeah, I thought. I mean, obviously, it's like sexist and annoying, but like it was funny <laughs> in the context that he did it just to make Ruby and Yang mad. Like, like obviously, it was sexist and annoying, but it's still funny. It, well, it was funny in that, like... No, I agree. Like, I mean, just... It's I, I think that people are going to disagree with us and find Crow um, unsympathetic. Like, I, I think, think one well, of the patrons was talking about that. It was, I mean, well, I think it's hard. I mean, I have people in my life who are very much like Crow, and, like, I don't know. And especially coming off of just being at Thanksgiving with my family, and, like, people who say things just to get on your nerves, but you love them anyway... To me, the deal with Crow is like he represents kind of an tired and unsympathetic archetype, um, you know, of like the uh, rugged kind of detached uh, yeah. loner who goes on his own and always is a male, you know. Um, but I think what stands out about Crow is his relationship with Ruby and now Yang. Yeah, like um, it's, it humanizes him and yeah. it doesn't. It takes him away from that really annoying trope because he. It's so very clear that he loves Ruby and Yang, and especially the warning he gives them. It's because he cares about them, and he's sitting there playing video games with them. Like he's a cool dude. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm 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 high on Crow. And I think it's important to have we. It's important to have flawed characters like these, and flawed characters that are like, you know, real because this is this is an entirely realistic like person. Um. Okay, yeah, I, I, and it's 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 fine to have these type of yeah, it's fine to have it. And the important thing is that he doesn't actually do anything that is. He, we haven't actually seen him do anything that's uh, like amoral or anything. He's just he's right. he's all talk, you know. Well, and again, I again, this is we've also had this discussion before. I don't think it really matters amoral or not. Like it's depending. Well, like, he, he, I'm not. Yeah, there's no. I'm saying there's no actual reason to hate him based on his yeah. actions. Is the point, yes. regardless. Of, and also, I, we interesting characters. Like depending on where you go, we can have villains who are interesting, who are good characters. That is also true. I don't think he's supposed. He's like falls under the category of a villain, though. No, but I'm just talking about like he doesn't have to be perfect to be a good character. Um, uh, yes, I do think that is separate from the discussion on Crow, though. Um, but point taken. I, uh, I think the, he, I think it is reasonable to be annoyed by Crow because he is in a super annoying archetype. Um, however, I do like the decision to make him, uh, his interactions with Ruby and Yang really, really uh, interesting. He clearly loves them, and yeah. he like. I mean, I don't, and it's really, and I. And I don't definitely don't think that any reason to dislike him is his interactions with Ospin or anything. We barely know him. Um, I mean, in that in that scene last episode, he was like annoyingly detached and harsh yeah. towards Winter. So I feel like that's reasonable to not like that. I didn't well, we particularly care, Winter. but um, I also think like be like not liking Winter is reasonable too. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, we had the Zwe the Zwe pillow thrown at um at uh <laughs> I didn't was that a thing? I don't remember. Like, how do they have a pillow of their dog? Or is, the, or is it just a pillow of a corgi or something, you know? Who even knows? I don't know. Anyway, um, Crow says he's not in trouble with Ozpin. Um Ruby says their dad said you were away on a mission for like ever. Uh, Ruby says we're pretty much pros too. We totally saved Vale when you were gone. <laughs> almost managed to stop a train. They don't give out medals for, be- for almost. Uh, Ruby says they do and they're called silver. <laughs> <laughs> that's good um I, I i always love how they animate ruby like she's so proud of herself when she makes these comebacks it's you know it's so great yeah I, the, how they animate ruby ruby's is precious beautiful. yeah and always ruby is uh the most precious obviously also how um later he says uh inappropriate stories and then ruby's like ew <laughs> i'm very convinced that they're tr- purposely trying to keep ruby like super young um yes like uh like a big a big talking point recently has been that ruby 
has shown no, or, you know, a talking point because I've said it has, is Ruby has never shown romantic like attraction towards anyone in the show. And, you know, maybe potentially that's because they're making her uh, a non-straight character at some point. But I, th- I think in reality, it's just that they don't like they're, they're, she's, they're representing her as young and innocent and yeah. like, it's just not like romance stuff, not for her. Right. And she, we don't, do we know how old she is? She's, we know she's, she's 15. Young. She's 15. She's 15. Okay. And the rest of them are 17. Yeah. Yeah. Because she goes, she's gotten in a beacon earlier. Yeah. They said two years early. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a conscious decision that keeps Ruby super sympathetic. Like, I don't know how you would hate Ruby. It's impossible. Like you would have to like, you would have to hate everything. Happiness. And like, <laughs> well, some people do. You, yeah. Like you'd have to hate puppies and. Yeah. I agree. Ruby is. I mean, have we have we had that before? Ruby's like a puppy. I don't know. I feel like that might have been a joke at some point. Anyway, um, she's precious. She's the most precious. Yeah. Um, help. They help take down Roman Torchwick. Uh, Crow says, "Really think four girls and their friends can end all crime in the kingdom?" And Ruby says, "I mean, I did until you said that." Uh, (laughs) That was funny. Ruby's dialogue is so great. Ruby's dialogue is always very good. Yeah. They they kind of just have random aside comebacks for her sometimes, and it's just it's just irrelevant. But it's good that they keep writing them. Great. Uh, Vi- uh, uh, Crow says violence hasn't dropped uh, since Roman got got kidnapped or got. I don't, he says napped. I don't know what he said. Um, it's completely it stopped completely, which is interesting and kind of new information. Um, he says you cut off the head, but now the second head's calling the shots. So let's talk about that. Um, Crow's hypothesizing that. Uh, someone has stepped up in Roman Torchwick's place and that they're secretly still doing things even if crime is not ostensibly still I mean, happening. I mean, and we know Roman is just, he's not even like a big player. He's a pawn. Um, uh, Roman was, uh, as far as we knew, second in the command. Mm, I think that's iffy because I think it's... The, to be fair, to be fair Cinder Cinder. sometimes went over his head with Mercury and Emerald. I, but I think that my my read on that was the chain of command, as far as we knew, was Cinder into Roman, into that. Well, I think there's someone above Cinder that's implied. Well, uh, um, I think that there could be someone above Cinder. I don't think the show has explicitly implied that yet. Well, I think it's implied, but okay. Well, you're you you're hypothesizing this, I would say. I, I, uh, I, think I it's, mean, definitely. I definitely. It's possible. I'm, I mean, I, I would. My what I would say is come to me with like what you're explicitly implying it from. You know, like I also well, think that there's someone above Cinder, but I don't. Well, based on dialogue and like how things have been run in like season two specifically, like when they're in the warehouse and we first meet Cinder, like officially, like with Roman, is that it's like that it is implied that there is someone working above Cinder. Um. I mean, I think I, I think I disagree with that. Um, I don't I don't think that's the intent of that scene. But uh, I'm not saying that's the intent, but that's that's the show. Like like we're about to discuss anyway. Well, when like, you're gonna when you're gonna imply something, then there needs to be intent for an implication. Is what I would say. Uh, well, the thing is, they do that, but then it's also very vague. That so. is true. It is sometimes really hard to tell with the show. They they just have a lot of vague. They so I think that's, them. and they also, and other times they do things they think they're being really secret with it, and it's very obvious. So yeah, so there's obvious like there's obvious uh, implied stuff, and then there's like stuff where there's just no, it's, they just give no information, so it's impossible to tell. Like I, I think that um, the someone above Cinder thing is not in the category of not enough information, vague, but I, it's reasonable maybe to think that that's just one of the things that they've done that on. Okay, so that's that's fine. Um, we've settled at a somewhat reasonable place there. No, I forgot what we we're talking about. Um, crime. So anyway, I think the main point, this is how I read the scene is that, um, is that, uh, is that Crow thinks that, uh, sin is that Roman was the head and we know that Roman was not the head. Yeah. Did you also read his dialogue like that? Crow's dialogue? Yes. Like he, they I mean, they think that Rome, like someone under Roman is taking Like, I mean, they have no, I mean, they have no idea the game that's being played at hand and we only know parts of it. I guess, I guess cut off the head, but now a second head's calling the shots. I guess he could just mean that someone else has stepped up in his place. Like, it's not he necessarily that. He could also mean it, that we're, I mean, he could also, that, I mean, that's also a half reference to a Hydra. Yeah. Which suggests that it either already has many heads or, like, another one grows. So, like, I think that, I mean, we don't know everything Crow knows. I mean, he didn't even tell them about their mission. Yeah. So, um, we know Crow has intel. That's why Crow came back and he's concerned. It also suggests that if it's a Hydra, then that uh, if they were to take down Cinder, then the organization would still be running, yes. which to our knowledge is not how they work. To our knowledge, Cinder's the only one we've actually seen in charge. Yes. 
Um, so I guess how I read this is that either, uh, you're right, he's not revealing things and he knows stuff we don't, or that he's just, he doesn't have a good grasp of the situation. That's kind of how I read yeah. the scene. I mean, I would, I mean, I think the safest bet is to assume that he doesn't actually know what's going on. Yeah. And this is like, this, they've done this a few times that like basically telling us that, um, none of the, uh, kind of the, the force, the, the, the group of, of good who we saw, like mentioned last episode, um, actually is any real close to knowing, uh, Cinder, like, and like knowing the power structure and like they're, anything about that. It doesn't seem like they're close. All they know is that she's lurking somewhere within them, you know, like, well, I don't even think they know that she's a beacon. They don't. Do they know that for sure? Um, she said that uh, the she, crow last week said that in the last episode said that uh, the she's among us, right? So it's, right. So it could be a beacon, or it could just be in the city, or you know, something like yeah. that. Um, I think if if they knew she was in Beacon, then they could just search everyone. I don't know why they haven't done. That's that. the thing. There, she's. I mean, they're hiding in plain sight. Like they're in the tournament. They're rigging the tournament. Do you think like, it's unrealistic that they've been able to hide so easily as students? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a little weird given that you would think that they would have vetted everyone, but like, I mean, unless they didn't talk to anyone from like they're claiming to be from Haven, right? Uh, yeah. Right. But then by that same token, if they can rig this whole tournament. What's that to say that they don't have like fake documents proving that? Yeah, they definitely. Season? Yeah, when when Cinder hacked them last season, she definitely inserted them into the records. Like, because I definitely think that like, I mean, this is the best way they've done it. Like, it wouldn't they couldn't have faked being be- students a beacon, but definitely inserting themselves as students from another school like that's genius. I think it like it in universe. I actually think it makes sense. Like, I don't. It does, but I, it's it's kind of unfulfilling. Um, that well, it just, it's very, it's very like, it's not very exciting. It's, yeah, I agree. It's, it's like un, uh, unexciting, unfulfilling. It just doesn't seem legitimate to me. Even, even really though it, them. even though it's legitimate in universe, I don't know. Well, it's just them sneaking in didn't take very long. Like yeah. it wasn't very, yeah. we just didn't see a lot of it. It was just, they're suddenly here and they're taking over everything. And it's just, we're not like, we don't get to see as, I don't think we get to see as much of, the villains as much as we'd like to like we don't get to see i mean and that's also part of it we if we know what if we know everything that's going on that's really frustrating but i think we're also too in the dark to really enjoy what's going on um it's fine balance yeah if we know everything then we're just gonna be frustrated we're like oh my god ruby figure it out but then but then we also don't know enough to be like we don't really know where we don't really know what's going on at all like there's just not like we don't I, even know what their great plan is. Like they were trying to get Grim into the city, but then it's like, well, what? It's like, what about why are now? they? Yeah, why are they doing that? Why are they even doing anything? Yeah, like, I, 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 I completely agree with you. They're they're not giving us enough information to find the villains' plot uh, fulfilling. Uh, and there's not, and there's not, there's no sense of urgency either. Like, there's no like, sense of urgency. What are they? There's no time limit on what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, like we don't like. I mean, with the Grim thing, it was like, oh my god, like we're on a train. This is scary. Crap. And they were also planning it. Like the, they, I, the train actually entered the city before it was supposed to. Like they had to begin the attack before it was originally. Last planned. season, there was totally a sense of urgency. It was like we yeah. they didn't know that the train was coming specifically, but they knew something was going to happen, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and then the attack actually happened ahead of schedule. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, time crap. Now it's just like, okay, we're in the tournament. Is something going to happen at the end of the tournament? Like, what's the point of this? Yeah, they're they're in a bad place with the villains right now. I think is is the main point. Um, we need clarification on what they're even doing right now, and we need a a uh, concrete timeline on on villain activities. Um, and I think we need it fast because as as much as I really do like Emerald and a lot to a lesser extent Mercury, and I also really like Cinder. Uh, they're just not well, their actions are not interesting at the moment. No. Mm-hmm. Agree. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, good discussion. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it was though. Uh, team. They were part of going back to the scene because we were, we were derailed. They're team Stark. Um, so we didn't know that that was their team name before. S T R Q. We would have to be. Um, I guess because Summer is their leader, so she goes first. Summer is. Um, they're pretty no well well known back in the day. Inappropriate stories I mentioned, and Yang is like serious. Uh. Yang is like startled by the talk of her mother, the picture of her mother, yeah. right? So she's like not she's like out of it. Um yep. 
You guys, Crow says, you have a long way to go. Graduating doesn't mean you're done. Every day out there is worth a week in this place. Um, yeah. So what do you think of this? I don't know. He's, he kind of just rambles about stuff. Doesn't really. I mean, I mean, it's a little like out of, it's not out of, I mean, it's, it's not out of place. It just feels forced. So does this, the scene has Crow just saying a lot of different things. Did it, did it seem forced to you? I mean, not, like, super forced. I mean, the fact that they made the episode Lessons Learned, obviously, is we're supposed to get something out of this. I would, it just seems... Yeah. It's a little odd. It's just odd. It was a little odd. La- however, I I actually kind of liked how the scene was structured. Last week, last episode, I was really frustrated by um, Crow monologuing on things that the characters in the scene should have known already. Yeah. So it didn't make sense. I don't think this this episode has that problem at all. No. I think everything Crow tells Ruby and Yang is um it's like a reasonable thing to be saying in that situation. And yeah, and it's and it's foreshadowing. Like obviously, these this is what he says is going to be important later. Like this is something they need to learn. I mean, it'd be <laughs> it's like foreshadowing in the vaguest way. Like, well, how could this advice be applied concretely? You know, it's just very vague general advice. Um, but that being said, I, I just, I think it kind of works as just a general interaction with the two. Like sometimes when you're talking to people, you talk about a lot of different things that are only tangentially related. I think it's fine. Yeah. Like it's, it's fine. It's just like, and we know that like, I mean, granted, this is also something we've had before. Like Blake has said it, Weiss has said it, like, we don't really know what we're doing. We just kind of need to be careful. And like, which, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it. I don't know. Like it, it foreshadows things that are to come, which we already knew these things were coming. So it's not very. It's not like necessary foreshadowing. I mean, we know things will happen. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> things in general will happen. Okay. Um, potentially even more successful than the crow scene, I would say, is the Weiss and Winter interactions. Well, I guess we should also ex- we should be ex- we should expect Team Ruby to lose. And uh, honestly, why would why would you? Why would you oh, now you, okay. You're saying this is foreshadowing a fall. They're, they he's saying yes. too overconfident. Yes, that and which and which we should expect anyway because like everything so far has it's been kind of easy if that makes sense. Um, like obviously they've been struggling and like but like and it's like, like yeah they they did lose la- at the end of last season but they still did everything fairly it, everything kind of went went to plan you know they went yeah, they so, got the mission they wanted they found the you know the underground city like pretty easily yeah I agree like I should we should be expecting and I don't even mean the tournament like. We should be expecting a very bad loss. Do you think that, like, one of the main four is going to get hurt pretty bad? Uh, I would... I'm a little hesitant simply because, like, we haven't actually had anything like that happen. Like, we've had people die, but no one important. Yeah, I mean, this was... If if this was, like, a different show, I would have said, do you think one of the main characters is going to die? But, like, you know, I'm like, that was my... Because that's yeah. my first instinct, is, like, we should expect someone to die, but, like, that's not going to happen. I think we could have, like... Like, I, yeah, I could have get someone seriously hurt. hurt, you know. Yeah, like, I, I feel like someone that getting very, very hurt because I feel like that's the only way that they will like learn is if they lose very badly and someone gets hurt. The problem is that the villain threat doesn't seem super huge at the moment. I know, well, I know, the sim- villain threat, like, it's not even like the villain threat is also like apparently a threat to veil if not the whole world. It's, it's, so it's it, Cinder's supposed to be just this giant threat to the whole world, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's very difficult to, like, think about this in terms of our four main characters. We haven't even seen Blake in two episodes. They're, they are losing track of the main cast right now. I, I, I agree. And we, also, and we also have What's-His-Face we have to worry about. Blake's homeboy. Uh, yes, Adam. is. is so we have not seen Adam yet this season. Right. Obviously, he has to appear and be a problem. Uh, Adam seems like more of a threat than Cinder to me right now, but he has yes. not appeared yet. Um, we had, we, yeah, that's right. I even forgot that he's working with them, you know, but, uh, we haven't seen that explicitly at all. So I think that bringing Adam in would be a good decision next episode. In fact, I hope that happens. Well, we need to see him soon. Like we don't like, I forgot that he was like a thing. I mean, it could just be like, he could just be the, the climax of the season, but I hope that's not the case. Um, Good, good points there. I, I, I wasn't necessarily picking up. I, I think you're right. I think that we are foreshadowing kind of a fall. Um, but I didn't necessarily get the sense of that from watching immediately, but discussing it, I got the sense. Okay. Let's talk, uh, Weiss and Winter. Um, what are your general sense of, uh, what, I guess my first question is what's your general sense of Weiss and Winter's sister dynamic? Well, it's definitely a mix of like an actual like sister relationship. And then also like, I am your superior and I'm trying to like train you better. Like Um, it's a very odd relationship. Like, she clearly she clearly cares about I think it's a kind of like 
it's a very military way of like dealing with things. Like she like ca- she obviously cares for Weiss. Winter does, and but she also like wants her to be better. She wants her to be the best that she can be in order to protect her. Do you do you think Winter gets the sense of um of like a, hi- a hierarchy and like formality? Do you think she gets that from her military background or from her? Uh, high class family dynamic. I definitely like, think it's more of the family dynamic. That's that was that what I also, got the impression but of. But that too. also feeds into her being in the military. Yeah. See, I yeah, I always thought the winter acted this way towards Weiss because they're just this uh the rich family thing. You know? Yeah, I think it is definitely that, but then also like being in the military doesn't help. Yeah, I I, I agree. Um I I'm I've questioned so we I think we've had two episodes in a row now with winter hitting Weiss. Um like, I, I feel like this is, like, Weiss doesn't react super badly in this episode, let's be clear. But, yeah. um, and she's always, she thinks very highly of Winter. It almost, it, it's, it's, I don't know. I've gotten the impression two episodes in a row now, it's almost like a borderline on abusive, like, older sister relationship. I mean, obviously hitting her isn't nice, but I don't think, I wouldn't consider it abusive. It's, I mean, that word is very difficult to use. Um, yeah. And I think a lot more things are abusive than people think of and it's not like the end of the world but uh i mean not to say it's not good no it's good but i mean they definitely don't have like the best relationship in the world and i definitely think it has to do with their upbringing i don't necessarily think it's the relationship in particular it's That's like what is expected of both of them um yeah but it is winter taking it out on her like yes i winter do wouldn't need to doesn't winter doesn't need to give into the schnee expectations anymore she's it's no. like she's completely detached from the family now that that's well, the impression I, I got this episode. Well, I don't know about detached. It's just she's on her own. She's on now. her own, like, and she's like she specifically says she chose um going into the you know the whatever country I get them to use military over uh her her family right yeah. um she says she at some point she did stop taking the mud uh, dad's money yeah so like I feel like th- there's not much excuse it's like oh just it's winter upholding the knee dynamic oh no no I didn't mean it like that I just meant like. I don't like. I don't. I don't see the relationship as abusive. No, I don't. Like, obviously, it's not okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't either. Like, I think it is something to consider, though. Um, and also, well, I mean, just, it's I'm definitely. Just... I mean, I think we should look more into like just Weiss's and her father's relationship because that's where she, that's where stuff's weird. Well, like, we can talk that, but really, Weiss is not doing anything except being super happy that her sister's there and her sister's yeah. being super harsh on her and hitting her, and yeah. I'm not really okay with my baby being treated that way, basically. No, I agree, saying. same. But, like, it's just, I don't know, like, I don't know, it's hard for me to, I don't, I don't think this is abusive, and I don't think, like... Regardless of whether or not we should apply the specific, that specific term to her, you're, you've been very sympathetic towards, uh... Towards winter. I mean, and you can find like unsympathetic characters like Fave and like attractive and stuff like that. And I think that's completely legitimate. But do you objective, not, uh, not necessarily objectively, but ignoring any, um, like favorite character type things? Yeah. Like, do you think that winter is like appears like a sympathetic character to the audience right now? Well, I don't, I can't, I don't, well, my thing is also like, I also don't get like that. I'm not usually like, one who like is in line with other what other people think about characters typically because i look at things differently but i wouldn't say she's sympathetic but i wouldn't say she's unsympathetic either she's honestly she's a stoic wall like she's just a brick of a character and in a a, a bad way not in a bad way she just she simply is and i think it's very difficult to define her one way or the other because one i mean she and she's not it's not that she's two contrasting things she just simply is she is very strict, but she very clearly cares about Weiss. Um, I, I, I think that it simply is kind of takes, uh, kind of delegitimizes some of the great character work they've been doing with Winter. No, 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 that's, I mean, no, I think Winter is a great character, and we have a lot of her. I, but I would say, by, since she simply is, is, I don't think she's sympathetic or unsympathetic. She's just Winter. So, in fact, you're not actually delegitimizing the character. You're saying you're maybe legitimizing Winter's character more than any other character on the show. She's not a portrayal. She just appeals very, appeals, appears very real to you. Yeah, Winter is just, she's just Winter. Like Yeah, so that's that's a very high praise of her characterization, in fact. Yeah, I think, and in fact, that we, don't, we haven't had her for a very long time, but I have. I feel like I have a very good grasp of Winter's character, which I think mm-hmm. that's, that's something very good to have of a character, and I feel the same way about Crow. Both of their characters have been handled very well. 
yeah. in the sense that we know who they are, and like, and especially since we have, we've only known them this season, and like, we have, and they haven't been in here, they haven't been here the whole season. It's only like, been two episodes. Yeah, like we've barely had them, and like, I feel like we have a good grasp of who they are, especially Winter's leaving. Like, I assume she'll be back, probably. You know, I mean, I would hope so. Yeah, I hope so. She's my fave, but um, like, I want to, I want to talk about that in a second, but I. Uh, her being your favorite, because I think that actually is an important thing to talk about. But I, at first, I, I actually really agree with you on on Winter. I think that um, they it's she's not explicitly sympathetic or unsympathetic. Um, I, I think that they've done an incredible job making her kind of real and making her just like she obviously has obvious faults. Like she doesn't treat Weiss great. Yeah. Um, she's, I do think her character makes Weiss more sympathetic than she yes, ever has been. Yes, I agree. I mean, I've always found Weiss incredibly sympathetic, yeah. but like I'm, you know, that's that's fave goggles. <laughs> it's well, like it's, it's also it's also very interesting because honestly, Weiss treated Ruby no different in the beginning than Winter treats her. Mm, that is not a uh, a thing that makes me very happy, but I think that that's a legitimate point to bring up. Um, see, however. So the question is, did Weiss, like, hit Ruby? Did Weiss, like, actually get angry at Ruby? Or is Weiss just angry at the world, you know? Um, yeah. I think it is a legitimate point. And I think that's probably a mirror that they're going for. Um, I've always fat gotten the impression that the crew, and especially the voice actors, think that Weiss treats Ruby much worse than she actually does in the show. Yes. Um, like the, in the Facebook chat before, uh, the season started, we had both Ruby and Weiss's voice actresses saying that Ruby deserves someone better than Weiss, as if like Weiss had been mistreating Ruby. And I feel like being not warm to someone is much different than having like unrealistic expectations and hitting them. You know, like I, I, I yeah. don't, I don't see them as the same type of dynamics. Then again, I mean, biases, I'm a huge white road shipper and Weiss is my favorite character. So it's hard for me to see this, uh, unbiasedly. Well, I don't think, well, just something based on something. I don't think winter has unrealistic expectations of Weiss. Um, explain. Like winter, like now if Weiss actually doesn't have the semblance or whatever, like, okay. Then in that case, well, it wouldn't even be unrealistic. Like, in that, you would expect, if this is hereditary, for her to have the semblance. That would be a fair assumption. And if she doesn't have it, it's like, oh, okay, whoops, we didn't know. Like, you wouldn't know. But, like, I don't think it's unrealistic. And, now, this is a very tough love, like, she's she's pushing her... We've seen this plot so many times. Like, this is not a different or special plot. It's... and, and, And Weiss is going to overcome it. Like, she's going to figure out how to summon, and she's going to, like, be better than she, like, better, she's going to be a better fighter than she was. It's, that's just what it is. And this has been Weiss's character all along. Weiss has never fought any, Weiss's biggest enemy has always been herself. Yeah, I agree with that. To to me, it's not about the semblance, really. It's just about winter. Weiss is always like, uh, like, and I, and then we did this, we, 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 like, accomplished this thing, and I specifically, I'm like, the top of my class, and winter's like, uh, I don't care about that, you know? Yeah, which, I mean, obviously that's not great. But it's like, this isn't, this, I don't know, this isn't unique. Like, this is. I mean, I agree. Like, it's, it's a tropey relationship. You know, it's something we've seen before. And. Winter just wants the best out of Weiss. And I think that comes across this episode much more than the previous one. Um, like, I, Winter at, at time, like, in the last episode, Weiss was like, uh, I was so, I'm so happy to see you. And Winter's like, you know, like, whatever. And this episode, Weiss is like, yeah, I'm so happy to see you. And Winter's like, yeah, you know, so I think, I think she comes across much warmer and, um it's like well, honestly like i think winter is like like if weiss hadn't warmed up to the group like she did i think she oh would be just like winter oh you're on you're on fire today you're you what winter is weiss pre uh team ruby yes like wow, they're the great, same person that's a that's a great point yeah i i agree with that so maybe it's like we shouldn't be so hard on winter winter just hasn't had the you know, benefit of yeah. the great friendships of uh the three uh winter you know, is like well people talk about weiss and she's the ice queen winter's the ice queen winter really yeah weiss has weiss has melted <laughs> she is now very warm you know yeah like winter is just winter i mean and she's in the military and like she just winter is winter is everything Weiss wanted to be, but Weiss has since derailed from this dream. Like she's on a different course than winter. Yeah, I, I, this I completely. Is where we agree. have this conflict. Yeah, and it, this must be really hard for Weiss seeing winter now. Like she still yeah. idolizes her and stuff, but you know, I think Weiss cares about people more now. So yeah. how does she view how is she viewing winter? It must be complicated. Yeah. Well, and I think. Well, I think I don't think 
no, Winter loves Weiss. I think that's very they they very clearly care about each other, and I don't think Weiss cares about more about cares more for Winter than Winter cares for her. It just Winter just isn't going to show it. Um, yeah, I I I would probably agree with that. I don't think it's for sure. Like, I mean, I got the sense that Winter cared here, but um, I think Winter like. And I think we'll find this, like, Winter wants Weiss to, like, develop her abilities, because of obviously, like, war is coming. Like, Weiss yeah. needs to be able to fight and do everything yeah. that she can. I, I, I did get the sense that when all of this coldness from Winter towards Weiss came out of uh, hoping for the best and caring. But I do think that there's an element of, we've only seen Winter for two episodes, so it's not, like, like I mean, Weiss, it's, hard to say. It's, it's, it's not like we're free to draw these... Um, like Weiss, eventually you knew, like middle of season one, we'd seen her so much, you knew that her um, uncaring was like a friend and stuff, right? Like Winter, we haven't seen enough of her to get to that point yet, I think. No. Well, we don't even know what the, her and Crow's problem is. Like, we don't even know. Yeah, we don't even, yeah, we don't know that she's at fault or is like, maybe she's uh, completely not at fault in that, you know, stuff like that. Um, you, I don't you kind of convinced me on on being super pro winter here so viewing winter as a pre-team movie wise yeah definitely does it for me um personally you're really high on winter and like we've been talking super objectively but what do you love about about winter's character well i think a lot has to do is like i mean i mean it's not just her character design because she's an awesome character design like she's great i don't know i just like like I mean, I just, these kind of characters, these kind of characters appeal to me. Like, the bookworm, the bookworm and, like, like, the assertive, like, you know, female character. Like, mm-hmm. these things always, these these are characters that always appeal to me. And then, I don't know, they're just, Winter is just a very interesting character to me. I want to know more about her. And I think it does, I think there is also the appeal to the pre-Ruby Weiss. Because, now, originally, I didn't like Weiss too much. Because she was mean to my child, Ruby. But, like, I grew to like Weiss. And I mean, and th- I even started to like Weiss before she started like being all nice. So I think Winter just is a very in- interesting element to her. Now I'm not, I'm still not 100 percent sure why I like her so much. But did I say Weiss meant Winter? I do like Weiss. No, no, but. you said Winter. Yeah. What? What in the future? Like, w- let's say Winter comes, like she's gone for a few episodes, and then she's back for the rest of the season. Like, there's a conflict, and she's there for it would we want winter to follow a similar path that weiss has and like warming up not necessarily warming up but i want to see a moment where she breaks a little Mm -hmm. like that that facade of like being all cool and collected and like calm i want it broken and i want it and i in particular i'd want it to be like weiss is in danger or weiss has been hurt not that i want weiss hurt like but something like that and or any or someone else that she cares about that there is a moment of fear and she breaks, and, like, we kind of... Like, what happens with Weiss? Like, when Weiss has her moment of, you know, where we see that Weiss is genuinely concerned for people. Like, I want that for Winter. Yeah, especially towards her sister. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the, I think also, that's the route to go. I want to know what it is between Winter and Crow. Like, I want to know what it is. Like, why? Like, why did they fight? Like, do they just not like... Like, why, do they, why don't they like each other? We, I want to know, and I want it to not be a past romantic history. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Thank you. That is. But like, and I want it, to, and it obviously has to be something really bad because, like, normal people don't get into fights in the middle of the street. It's like it's like Weiss. It's like Winter. Like, uh, did something for the greater good that happened to have hurt um, Crow's uh, like a uh, past uh, wife or something. You know, something like that. Maybe there's a really good chance that Winter and somehow. I mean, Grant, we don't know. Do we know how much older Winter is? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because I, I mean, I'm almost tempted to say that Winter and Crow are similar in age. Yeah, I mean, I get the impression that Crow is older, but they could be similar. And, like, what if Winter was somehow involved with Team Stark? Like, maybe she was the cause of something happening. Yeah, yeah, tie her back, especially if you tie her back into... Like, um, Summer in particular. Into Summer, that could be, ooh, yeah. Wait, we're... Summer, we're Summer and... Summer... And Crow, could they have been a thing? I don't know. Well, I don't even mean something like that. I mean, like, in some way they got one of their parents killed. Yeah, like, so, like uh, Winter was involved somehow in Summer Rose's death. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, that might be where we're going with this. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, back to just Winter in general. I feel like they've been super successful in our characterization in 
you know, in such a short time. And they've kind of created this uh, great parallel to Weiss. Her interactions with Weiss have been great. I like where they're going with Weiss's character. Um, I like how they've included last episode Ruby in relation to Weiss and Renner's relationship. Um, and Crow too. They've they've created kind of two kind of very complex characters in a, a short amount of time. And very in, short amount of time. Yeah, and in considering the show often struggles with its uh, narrative elements, uh, huge props to uh miles and uh or yeah miles and carrie for what they've done with the characters in such a short time also the preface like well you know me really liking winter we i also have the terrible habit of liking characters who actually never come back or are not important at all like lynn lynn Beifong is a really good example of my favorite character and like being underutilized from this the legend probably what's gonna happen yeah so that's probably gonna happen to winter yeah i mean i don't think winter's gonna be a main character this season but i think she we could ex- reasonably expect her to comes- come back at the end you know please um yeah i also don't think crow i mean maybe crow is a big force this season she's crow's still there well crow does leave the room at the end but he's it's not like we say yeah. uh, oh he's there you don't I see him flying like off done. yeah like he's done on his mission so i feel like he'll be around he'll probably also i think winter like maybe like so winter's leaving but like to have how high up is she in the military for her to be overseeing the delivery of like troops? That, are you saying that like that didn't seem like a very important thing or that scene did seem like an important thing? It doesn't seem very important. Yeah, like, I, I got the, yeah, I was kind of like, really? That's, that's all she is, you know? Like, I would assume that either she was lying, which I think that's a distinct possibility. Um, she, I think she was, it wasn't just troops she was overseeing, though. She's overseeing the, uh, I think that they were implying that she oversaw well, she the type sure. of technology that they fought last season. I think yes. that's what they were saying. You know, like, it's important what she was delivering, but, like, the reason they had her do it was because it got ambushed last time. And I'm like, so... It doesn't uh, seem like she's a decision maker at all. Yeah, and, it doesn't you know. seem like... Yeah, very I agree important. with that. Which is like that's she doesn't have to be super high up, but then it's like I mean I feel like she kind of needs it to be super high up. Uh, yeah. Also, she and reported, she also just got kicked out of the meeting last episode too. Yeah. So, but she also reports directly to him. I think I think Winter's just going to be our representation of uh, their army. You know, like yeah. So like she's just random general, second command general. You know, and she's not actually making any decisions because um what's his face is really just making every single decision but strongwood. yeah uh, is that his name iron ironwood yeah ironwood strongwood i don't know yeah Their so names. um let's talk this summoning um yeah so we talked about the 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 cargo thing um so apparently the <laughs> schnee semblance uh, is hereditary and consists of a million things which further complicates <laughs> our view on semblances as like, we've been very semblances? confused it's not what just are... glyphs it's also time dilation and summoning too uh, what to me this is like okay semblances at this point are just uh you know ball bleep right like so somehow but somehow these three things have to like converge into one thing there has to be just something that controls all of them I mean glyphs and summoning like those make sense going together like I'm fine with that I don't know time dilation though like what are they manipulating like that's what I don't understand like if you if you can like can if you can mess with time. What glyphs do everything and then like summon things like what is it that you're manipulating i'm i'm fine at this point and then also if we're in and if they have to summon things that they've already fought like are you actually are you creating something new or are you summoning a grim and well, okay, yeah it let's, talk, well, let's talk about that but i'm i'm I, i'm fine at this point with semblances just being like rule of cool uh, yeah. the rule of cool TV tropes, if you're unfamiliar, but like, I, I just, I want it to be declared that and like, not something that we like try to expand upon. Like if you're going to have summoning or some, uh, you're going to have semblances be rule of cool, just leave it at that. And like, don't try to explain it more. Um, I think we're going to run into problems if you try to make it make sense after it has it. Well, sense I think so we are going to keep explaining it. And it's going to get a problem. Really... <laughs> I agree. I think they're going to try to explain it and it's not going to be successful, but we're going to be like, what? It's going to be like the spirit world in avatar. We're just going to be like, what? <laughs> it's going to be a much less cool spirit world, basically. Yes. Okay. Um, so every Shni has summoned for generations, uh, but it's the one thing Weiss has been having trouble with. What do you think of them inserting this into the show? There's been no prior mentions of Weiss struggling with summonings, I believe. No. Um, is this the time? At some point when you have a show going on for long enough, you have to insert things and make it seem like it's been there all along. Um, characters are a classic example of this, like Azula in uh, Book 2 of Avatar, right? It's the classic example. Um, are, are, is this something that you're fine with, or is this like, oh, it should have been mentioned I- earlier? Well, I mean, it fits with her character, and let, I mean, this is, obviously, this is something that Weiss would 
it would bother her and that she would have this and that she would have a, that her character would have a struggle with something like this. That's fine. I mean, I don't really care too much. Like, if that makes sense, like, it's obviously going to be important later. Right now, I don't really care. I mean, I'm a, like the semblance thing was kind of like, OK, we're just talking. This is all right. I don't know. I mean, I'm more interested, like they've left us hints of what's to come and I'm very interested to see how that will play out. Like, this is fine. I think like I'm, this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened. Like, this is okay. Like I'm not too bad. It's, it fits her character. It doesn't like, it doesn't seem forced. Like this seems very natural. This is a problem that she would have. And it makes sense that she wouldn't really talk about it except with her older sister. Uh, I agree on all accounts. I don't really care. It makes, it kind of makes sense. It works with Weiss's character. Yep. So it's, it's, it's a good, insert into the story there's good and there's bad ones i think it's a good one um it's like a muscle you need to test your limits and then we see uh winter summon a white grim um we have weiss trying to summon think of your fallen foes uh so let's talk about the dad stuff afterwards but then later um we see the weiss in fact has summoned something it seems like because there's a sword that yeah. then dissipates and it's by the caterpillar which was framing the scene <laughs> the yeah. scene framing caterpillar uh and we also hear mirror mirror playing at the end which is an obvious callback to the white trailer from pre-season one with weiss's uh trailer um i don't necessarily which dylan made me watch which what i said which dylan made me watch yes i made her watch before this i, I don't love how they integrate the trailers in. like i feel like the trailer should just be something that doesn't have to do with the rest to the show but at the same I time mean, it's it's cool and i love no, this is the only yeah this is the only trailer i've seen but i think this is a really good idea like it's neat yeah the trailers are very good just check that. i mean they, this is one of the more successful ones but um uh the, yeah mirror mirror uh, is a great song and bring it back here i think it works um and the theory which i read um someone on co posted it, is that the sword has to do with the suit of armor that weiss is facing in the white trailer which i picked up on without reading the theory apparently um yeah do you do you think that visually did you think that the sword matched the one we saw yes no like because i watched the episode and then you linked me to the trailer so i watched the trailer and i don't know i was was watching the trailer i was expecting this is my first time seeing the trailer i hadn't seen the trailer we all know i didn't start watching until like i watched season two and this is my first time watching the show live and i so watching the trailer, I was expecting her to summon something. Like I was like, is this what the callback is? Because so Dylan sent me to this with like the context of this might be important to this week, and I was yeah. like, okay. And so I'm watching it, but then um, the sword I recognized as the same that was um, in. Well, I didn't recognize it immediately. Like I didn't recognize it until the sword fell and it like hit. It was in the ground. That is a very very clear connection between that sword and what we see at the end of um, today, um, today's episode. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think it's, I think it looks the same. I think mer- the so- the song being the same, and I think that uh, the explanation of um, Winter saying, uh, "Think back to the foes you've uh, defeated," Which, and no, Weiss, de- Weiss defeated talk- this sort of armor in the okay. yeah in the trailer. So I think it makes sense. And for me, I don't know. Like, I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand the context. There's uh, no context to the trailer. Okay, so for me, I think either I would really prefer. Like, there's two options here. Either the suit of armor was an actual something she fought. Or, like, and I don't mean, like, I don't think necessarily that we'll see this. Like, either she, so I guess three options. Either she already fought this, she will summon it at some point when it's important and helpful. And we'll be like, oh man, cool. And, and like, Ruby will say something dumb, like, I didn't know you could do that. And then, or we're going to have, um, well, actually, I think that's going to happen regardless. But it'll just depend on, like, in what context. We'll either have, um, they'll fight something that is this, and then she'll be able to summon it later. Or what I would prefer is that this represents, that the knight in the trailer represents, um, herself. Because we, like I mentioned earlier, this is her, like, Weiss's greatest enemy has always been herself. And this will be her overcoming this idea that she can't do it, that she's struggling with herself and, like, what she believes she can do and how she has to be the best. But she doesn't think she can be in like this crisis of identity and um, ability. So and I th- yeah. So in the in the white trailer, that's completely what the what the suit of armor represented. Um, like that, the, the, that is this, the trailer is just super thematic. Like it's it doesn't yeah. make there's no story context. It's just um, completely aesthetic for Weiss, and I just think it's super great. Like completely representative yes. of Weiss's character. Um, 
And however, there's the giving. There, however, the the sort of the suit of armor does give her a scar thing. So it's like implied that it was real or something like that. Um, but uh, it's regardless. I I don't think this uh, think of your past enemies and then she like literally summons her past enemies. I don't yeah. think that's supposed to be like a super literal thing in this episode. You know, I would hope not. Yeah. So like what I hope, I mean, I, I would hope that she does eventually summon whatever, like if she summons something like that's going to happen. We know that's going to happen. It's like Bolin and Lava Bending. This is going to happen. Duh. Great. Yeah. Great comparison. Um, so bringing, yeah. From bring, Legend of Korra, I guess we Yeah. From do. Legend of Korra. Yeah. Do. From, uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea to bring the, uh, the sword back kind of, uh, symbolically like further cementing the scene that this is like an internal thing for wise and i do and i do think this isn't going to be this isn't going to matter like what they're fighting this is something that she will get over herself i don't know what it'll be but i really like and i really hope it's what it is i don't want it to be a literal fight yeah like i don't i don't think it matters what wise ultimately summons like specifically yeah, it, it just it's it's just like her the her the the sword is like a symbol of her fighting yeah. like this is like a block in her it's like a mental block that she needs yeah. to get over and that's her definitely chakra. It's her chakra, and that's definitely what uh, Avatar reference. That's definitely what um, what Weiss or what Winter seems to be saying with a uh, with what she says earlier in the scene, which I think, and I think the struggle goes great with uh, Weiss's character in general. Yes, definitely. Like this is such a her struggle. Like this is perfect for her character, and I think that when we get past this, we will be like this will be we'll be in a good place with Weiss. And the other the other struggle is how Weiss is going to deal with her her family. So let's talk let's talk that because I think these two do relate. Um why don't you just move back home says Winter. Um uh I don't need his charity, but you do need his uh money, don't you? I may have been in a similar situation when I joined the military says uh says Winter. Um stop avoiding him and call back home so now weiss is aware of the problem even though she's probably aware and just like didn't think of it you know like didn't bring it to the forefront um winter says there's two choices call him back beg for his money back and explain uh, again why you're studying a beacon or you could continue to explore remnants discovering more about the world and honestly more about yourself which i thought those were very odd two choices yeah like what does explore like- remnant mean <laughs> Exactly. Or like, I can't have money and explore remnant. Yeah, like I don't think those are mutually exclusive. Also, I feel like so. Let's talk through this. So that second choice, uh, based on our conversation just now, is what I would tie to Weiss learning more about. Winter says more about learn more about yourself, and we're talking about Weiss has to explore internally in order to summon. So why is yeah. summoning tied to going away from the family? Because that's kind of uh, contrast. That's kind of contrastive because it's a hereditary yeah. thing for Schneez. Well, I think it also has to do more with like, I think this represents like not being the dependent heiress, like yeah. being yeah. her own person the way Winter is. Winter is in the military. She does her own thing. Like, So you can't use a Schneez ability uh, if you're until you're not dependent on the family? That could be, that could be, I think that might be more like literal, like kind of like struggle to have, I suppose. I think that would be, well, I think that has to be more of like coming into your own. I think that's what, and I think that's what wise need, like, does that make sense? Like, that's yeah. what you're saying, but like. That's a great way less, to phrase it. Yeah. Coming into yeah. her own. Like wise needs to become confident in herself and her abilities and not be so attached to this idea of like schnee, like reputation. And it's like, it, it doesn't need to involve ignoring her dad, but that's how she's, that's the first step yeah. in her, like, removing yes. the heiress title. Yeah. Yes. Which, but also at the same time, though, like, she's been ignoring her dad the entire time. So she's I been, for, since like, the, since the show began, she has been. Yeah. So I feel like we almost need a scene where she, like, calls him and is like, this is what I'm doing. I don't need your money, but, like, I, like, to have, like, I, we kind of need that moment of closure because, like, just rejecting his calls over and over it doesn't really do anything. Totally, we 100% need a scene of her calling her dad at the end of the season saying, um, I, I don't want to be, uh, dependent on the family, but we can still have a relationship, right? Yeah. That's okay. totally where, that's totally where we're going with this. Please. Yeah. I mean, it's just for Weiss's sake, I guess. So that would be good for her, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, how do you think her dad this, just shows up? That that could happen too. I don't think we're gonna see her. This is her dad. Um, I've seen theories of her dad being like the the main villain, or like someone in the schnees being the ultimate struggle against. Uh, I don't think that's where we're going. But well, that's. I mean, that'd be a little ridiculous at this point. I think so, probably. 
Um, how do you think that the scene deals with, uh, cause we just, we just talked for like half an hour about these complex themes that the scene deals with relating to Weiss and Winter's relationship. How do you think that, uh, it ultimately handled it? I think it was handled well. And like, I think we get a glimpse more into like what it's like to be a Schneen. And I think, and I think these are important things of context because this gets brought up constantly, not only by Weiss, but by other people. Uh, yeah, I, I think that a lot of times it's hard to relate to Weiss. Um, a lot of, I mean, just look at the evidence. Weiss is the least favorite of the four main characters. Um, despite the fact that she's the best, obviously, because I say so. But, uh, it's, it's, people have trouble relating to her and bringing Winter in gives us a, makes her a more empathetic character. Definitely. Yeah. And it's not, and it, I mean, it just makes Weiss more of a person. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I like Weiss and I think she's like, She's been, I mean, also, this is like a flaw with the show in general. The way we've dealt with characterization of Wyatt and all of them really is that we've seen, we've seen them, we've seen them grow in flashes. We haven't seen them grow at once. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually seen a gradual growth for these characters. It's just kind of like suddenly they're like this and we're like, okay. And it's just, it's very difficult to deal with. And having things like winter and like these kinds of moments like slows us down. Uh, it's, it's on one hand, you could argue that this is the first real concrete, like Weiss thing we've gotten, um, character wise. On the other hand, you could also argue now that Weiss is the most, uh, developed character on the show. Um, because all the characters have this problem and focusing on Weiss in the beginning of the season really just shoots her ahead. I mean, Yang has never had anything, um, except one scene. Uh, Blake has been very short and we're due for some more stuff with Blake. And, uh, Ruby's just, uh, has everything happen around her, but not necessarily yep. anything specifically with her. Yeah. That's the thing is we don't like Ruby's just Ruby. And then Blake, we know the most about Blake's life. But yeah, but not necessarily like connecting to her Blake. character or emotions or stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we know she's like really righteous and she, Blake will always do what's right. But yeah, but that's basically but that's it. Yeah. And, but then meanwhile, Weiss, we actually have like, we have, Weiss has been characterized. Like we know who Weiss is as a character. I think that Weiss is now the most developed character on the show. However, it has only been because of the last two episodes. So it's not like I think she was head and shoulders like at the end of last season. I think right. it's just because of the recent development. It's because of Winter, which and, is very be- interesting. Yeah. And, and also due to Winter's like characterization. And yeah, be to, due to the most successful minor character the show has had, I would say. Uh Pairing her with with Weiss makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, I I was impressed with these Weiss and Winter scenes when I'd watched it, and now after talking it out for like forty five minutes with you, I am even more impressed because uh, I think that this show often lacks depth. Um, often it's just flashy uh, action scenes and cool music. Well, after watching the trailer, like to me, like this episode is like awesome. Like there is a lot of depth here. Uh, yeah, I I think that I mean just look at the time that we've spent uh, like how long the podcast has gone on like i think that uh this episode has had more depth maybe than any other ruby episode i think that these ways and winter scenes were super successful and this is always a credit to good storytelling it's more successful when you look at it in more depth this scene yes uh which is always very impressive to me and huge huge props to uh miles and carrie um i i think that this scene was extremely well executed and i think everything they've done with winter and crow has been very good yes agree yeah cool so um we leave off with weiss uh actually ignoring the dad call seemingly going on the track of becoming her you know her own person coming into her own um which will incidentally get her closer to summoning um you know stuff like that so we're we're on path for this weiss development Yep, and I'm very excited for it. Yeah, and even if Weiss isn't the focus of next episode, which she pr- she probably shouldn't be, like we should probably bring yeah. Blake in. But uh, where is Blake? Where yeah. is my child? Where is she? Even even if she's not, I think that uh, because of how well you set this up, then we can have a great. Uh, even if it's like mostly on the side, it'll still be a fairly successful development arc. Definitely. Cool. So um, overall, I'm much higher on this episode having talked it out because, like I said, uh, it always impresses me when more depth is added uh like looking at into it in greater detail and even if the fight scene wasn't great it was still i guess one of the better ones this season i guess um and i'm impressed by a lot of the character work they're doing so um i'm now much more optimistic uh would you say this is better or worse than last episode uh i mean i guess on term like i guess it would depend on like on different terms like last episode was more interesting had more going on this episode was maybe deeper 
Yeah, I think this episode definitely went deeper character-wise. I mean, obviously we didn't further the plot at all, but I don't think we don't have to further the plot all the time. Like, yeah. And I think, I think, I, and honestly, when we have episodes like last week's, we lose a lot. So I think this is a good slowdown. I mean, the fight was pointless. I don't know why we had the fight. I mean, like, yeah, we get to see Emerald and Mercury, but whatever. But I think it was a good episode. I don't want to say it was better, but I don't want to say it was worse. I, yeah, I also I think a lot it. of the stuff we've been praising from this episode relates back to last episode stuff. Like we had great Weiss yes. and Winter stuff last episode as well and great Crow stuff too. So These episodes definitely go together and they complement each other. These two as a whole I would say are very successful, yeah. Yes. Um, cool. Like so, what one lacks, the other one has. Yeah, I think I think that's true. Like I think last episode lacked um, – sympatheticness from winter we got it here stuff like that yeah so cool so uh no what, what i don't think we missed anything i think we basically covered it all um next we i didn't see the trailers for next time i don't know if it's new next week um who knows Sorry. with this show <laughs> uh i don't like how rooster teeth schedules the show uh that being said it is their property that they're airing on their own and like maybe they have some better like i know for sure that Disney is mismanaging Gravity Falls. I don't know for sure if Rooster <laughs> Teeth is mismanaging the show. Because, like, I don't necessarily know internet uh, distribution things as well. So, uh, I, I would... Mean, I, I mean, every other week, at least it's regular. Yeah, I mean, it's not really every other week, though. It's just kind of coincidentally been that. Like, it might... It's probably new next week, but we'll see. Like, there's only three World of Remnant spots, and we've had one, so... Uh, oh, which I need to watch. Yeah, it was, it was basically nothing, but yeah, you should watch it anyway. Uh, I'm Dylan Heist, and that's Delaney Stilval. You can find out more about Overly Animated at OverlyAnimated.com. We cover, like I said, Ruby every week on here. Um, you can support us at Patreon.com slash Overly Animated. I mean, we just had one of our best podcasts ever. Maybe you should uh, think about supporting us because of that. Um, seriously, though, it's a great job, Delaney, on this. I was super impressed by a lot of your analysis today. Thank you. I try. No, like so you're super on point today. Um, it's, p- thank you, current patrons. Thank you for your support. Shayna, Mitch Cordell, Beatrice, Nate, Andy, and Jamie, aka okay. Hey Now Fever, Mitch Cordell, University, Beatrice Exchange, Buzz Like Your Nail Man. Um, next podcast on Wednesday covering Rebels in Moonbeam City. Uh, Ooh. news on the Gravity Falls front is that it probably won't be airing in December, so whatever. We'll have a theories podcast this month, probably. Um, and yeah, next, next Sunday, I guess, for, for Ruby. Uh, last comments on, uh, this episode or anything else, Delaney? Where's Blake? Oof. Where's Blake? I'll I mean, she's there. Or she's just save not... Blake. <laughs> so Where's save Blake? Waddles. I mean, save Blake. I mean, Waddles actually appeared in the last episode. Blake is two episodes now without appearing. Sure. Where's Blake? Uh, do you, is there some sort of Gravity Falls uh, Ruby conspiracy theory where Blake like is Waddles? I mean, we've never seen them on screen together <laughs> at the same time. So theoretically, that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Never <laughs> don't. <laughs> Don't 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 remember that. Okay, thanks for what they're here for. That's the that's that's for the board of this place. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, let me know what you thought. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, give me a comment. Um, agree, disagree with our specific analysis. Um, comments on the website. Uh, ask on Tumblr, whatever. All the links are on overlyanimated.com. Thanks for listening. Y'all can come to my Tumblr too. Go to Delaney's Tumblr too and tell her how awesome she was because she was. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.